What do you do if you have persistent or non-responsive or relapsing SIBO? Well, firstly, I think it's crucially important, coming back to my earlier point, to ask, is this really SIBO? Is it SIBO that's causing my symptoms? And just like I was sharing with, with the, the individual I was consulting with the other day, sometimes if you just keep treating the SIBO lab, the dead end is just in that. So maybe it's not actually SIBO, maybe it's constipation. And so in this case, something like a fiber supplement, prokinetics, abdominal massage could be helpful. Or maybe your symptoms aren't coming from SIBO, maybe they're coming from candida, or maybe there's some sort of other infection. We've been discussing on the podcast of late how these vector-borne microbes, things that can be passed by cats and fleas and ticks and certain mosquitoes and other biting flies, may be the cause of non-responsive symptoms, especially if you're seeing multiple systems involved, brain, skin, joints. And Erdman published a study that found about 50% of his patients who had chronic non-responsive gastrointestinal symptoms and or SIBO actually had one of these other microbes present. One of the ways that you can cue in on this is if you have done antimicrobial therapy of any sort and you had a pretty pronounced die-off reaction, meaning you had fatigue or joint pain or brain fog, then that may indicate there's something beyond SIBO because at least in my experience, and there's a few clinicians who have confirmed this also, SIBO doesn't seem to be a big driver of die-off. So something to bear in mind, if you do have die-off, there might be more than SIBO present. The other point I wanted to make for persistent SIBO is, are you using probiotics? Again, borrowing from this uh, patient I was speaking with the other day, coming from this major research center, they were very do not use probiotics, which is a travesty because the data is really different. You know, the, the data supports at least a trial on probiotics for the use of SIBO. This study is one of many a case in point supporting that. Okay, so in recap, I think the most important concept to take away is that synergy often equals success. So I would recommend starting with dietary changes, perhaps low FODMAP, but for some people, different diets work better like a candida diet, plus probiotics. And maybe if you want to add in some glutamine or other leaky gut supported nutrients, this is a good step one in my view. And then the second thing to consider would then be going to herbal antimicrobials, antibiotics, or both. And my rationale behind that comes from the fact that when they're combined together, the probiotics and, and, and sort of dietary changes along with the antimicrobial therapy, whether it be herbal or antibiotic, when they are combined, the success rate goes up quite a bit, about 30 to 35% looking at what's been reported in some of the systematic reviews. So then it begs the question, well, do I do both of them at once? You could, but for some people, that's going to be unnecessary. The diet plus a good clinical dose probiotic protocol plus things like glutamine or other gut supportive supplements will be enough to resolve symptoms in some. So you want to give that a month or two or so. And then if you're doing really well or fully resolved, you can stop there. If you don't think you're hitting quite the response rate that you should be, that's when you're very well positioned to add in the antimicrobials. Again, in my view, get the most out of them when using them at that point in time. Okay, well, again, I hope this helps and until next time.